So now in this last video on excretion, what we'll be going over is specifically how the human excretory system broadly functions and operates uh, along with its general gross anatomy. So we'll entitle this flowchart human excretory system. As we're going through this, figures 44.12 and also 44.13 provide nice visual details to look along as we go through the specifics of the human excretory system. So when we talk about us, what we want to focus on in this system within the human body uh, is the key organ. Because remember, systems are con consisting of or composed of organs. And in excretion, specifically the excretory system, we're going to label the kidneys uh, as our primary excretory organ. The kidneys are this bean shaped, uh, about the size of your fist organ. Uh, they're found in a pair, so you have two of them, uh, and they are going to be classified and we'll label them as the principal. That means they are the number one guys uh, that are going to do the process of excretion. So principal excretory organs. Okay, so this, their number one job is to complete that excretion uh, process that we've gone over in great detail thus far. What we have to remember, I want to emphasize one more time on the side here, is that somehow, some way, the kidney's anatomy and physiology has to accomplish those four steps of excretion. And we'll briefly write them over here for our own reference. Number one was filtration, which then led to number two, which was reabsorption. We're going to cover each of these and how the kidney plays a role. Reabsorption. Number three was secretion. So I'll write that down here. We just rewrite that. Secretion. And then finally, we culminate in excretion, number four. So each of these is going to somehow pop up and present itself within the kidney's anatomy and physiology, as we'll label out in just a second. Okay. So speaking of anatomy and physiology, let's first go over the kidney's physiology. And whenever I say physiology, you are going to think, of course, the kidney's functions. And there are two primary functions that the kidney can broadly be stated to have. Number one, I like to think of this as the osmoregulation function. Uh, in other words, the kidney is going to be really important uh, in adjusting blood composition. So kidneys adjust blood composition. So the blood is this fluid-based, water-based, you know, uh, water-based fluid that's going to be moving around all throughout the body, right? It's going to contain tons of stuff. It has composition, in other words. Kidneys are going to osmoregulate this composition, uh, and by doing this, they basically are going to maintain an internal fluid slash chemical balance. So we want the blood to have a certain amount of solutes and a certain amount of solvent. That's going to be maintained and adjusted physiologically by the kidneys. Maintain an internal fluid slash chemical balance. That's our primary number one job of the kidney. But in addition to that, the kidney also has a secondary job that's really, really important that sort of is a result of adjusting blood composition. And that's where I think of excretion explicitly coming in as number two. The number two function of the kidney is to do what we have talked about, produce urine. That's specifically what it's going to be uh, in uh, really initializing because of the fact that it's going to be adjusting the blood composition. This is basically osmoregulation and this is basically excretion. When we produce urine, specifically the kidneys, the idea is that water, salts, and of course, wastes, usually in the form of nitrogenous waste, but there are other metabolic wastes that we actually didn't go over. Just generally, water, salts, wastes are going to be filtered, filtered out. That's the idea of excretion, right? Filtered out of the body. And the kidney does both of these functions really, really well. Uh, and in order to do these functions, of course, you have to ensure that the anatomy, the structure, is going to be related to the function. And that's what we'll go over next. What about the kidney's anatomy? So specifically, the kidney's anatomy, we're going to really be really, really uh, simple here. It has two major layers of focus. Those two layers are as follows. Whenever you talk about kidneys, you're going to see this term, renal. Whenever you look at renal, that is referring to kidney. That's the idea here. So renal, just like cardio refers to heart, renal refers to kidney. Renal cortex is going to be our first layer. This is our outer layer. 
and the renal medulla, the kidney medulla, right? This is going to be the inner layer. And that's really all we're going to cover in terms of the kidney structure. Because what we want to focus on, and I'll just finish writing this, inner. What we want to focus on is this cortex area. Because there's a key component, a key unit, that's going to do this physiological job of adjusting blood composition and producing urine. Because as you know, organs are made up of tissues, and tissues are made up of cells. And cells are the unit of life. So watch this. There's going to be a unit within the kidney known as the cortical nephron. So that tells you a lot, actually. It tells you where it's located in the anatomy. It's located in the cortex, right? Cortical nephron. That's the term that we really want to know here. A nephron is going to be the functional unit. It is a cellular unit. Therefore, it is a functional unit of the kidneys. These are the guys that will actually physiologically be doing the cell job of adjusting blood composition, producing urine, and going through these four steps. That's why they are considered the functional, otherwise known as physiological, unit of the kidneys. So many, many nephrons. There's about a million nephrons within the kidneys. Um, and these are all going to do that function, these functions that we talked about. Specifically, we want to just look at the nephron in a little bit more detail. What does the nephron actually consist of? 44.13 does a really good job of showing you that. Uh, but just to broadly summarize, the nephron consists of a Bowman's capsule. So this is a part of the nephron. This is a part of the unit that's going to be important. Uh, we just want to label this as the closed end of the nephron and you really can't understand this unless you absolutely look at these figures so be sure to do that. In addition the Bowman's capsule is often highly associated with another structure of the nephron a part of it known as the glomerulus. This is going to be a capillary network so capillary is referring to something that's going to be a point of exchange. Whenever you see capillary that means blood is going to be exchanged. We have venous and arterial blood that is exchanging with one another, and this is actually found within the Bowman's capsule, BC for short. So if you look at the figure, you'll see this interconnected nature between the Bowman's capsule and glomerulus. What we really want to just say, uh, end all be all between these two at the nephron level, is that these two structures will undergo exchange, ultimately leading to our number one step in excretion. Remember those four steps, right? Right over here for reference, boom, we've done filtration. That's all you need to know. Filtration will be accomplished by the exchange mechanisms associated within the nephron, specifically the Bowman's capsule and glomerulus. So that's step one, done. We still have to do these other steps. What's going to accomplish that? Well, we also have a structure known as the loop of Henle. So it's a really funny, nice name. Again, look at the figure. It's a really interesting structure here. Uh, all you have to remember about the loop of Henle is that it is going to accomplish steps two and three. Reabsorption. So remember some things uh, we, we forgot, we, we actually did not take out. So we need to make sure that they are taken out. So we'll do reabsorption. I want to make sure I spell this right. Reabsorption. It looks right. Reabsorption and also step three, secretion, where we just do the final taking out of everything. So look over those steps if you forgot. Two and three are done by the loop of Henle. That's part of the nephron structure. That is the functional unit of the overall kidney organ within the excretory system. And then what am I missing? I'm missing the big, the big one, right? Number four, excretion. Excretion is going to be sort of a culmination of all of the functional unit, the entire nephron, the entire kidney, completing its job. Remember, the kidney produces urine, and I told you that this is basically the excretion side of the physiology story. So how do we get to that point? We're going to understand that the kidney produces urine, that's going to be that excretory product, uh, continuously actually. It's continuously working. It's not like it works sometimes and doesn't. This is a continuous process and continuous production. Kind of the reason why you're probably going to urinate every day, right? So it produces urine continuously, right? And so because of this, of this continuous production, we're going to have whatever that's being produced, which is the urine, uh, it flows to what's known as the ureters. The ureters are these structures that lead into, lead up to, something known as your bladder, the urinary bladder. And everybody sort of has a good idea of this. And again, this figure, 44.12, shows you a lot of the gross anatomy, so you can visualize this. Produce urine, 
flows through the ureters, goes to the urinary bladder. I'll just tell you the urinary bladder is a, is a nice sort of structure where we can store urine. Uh, and then finally, after you're done storing urine, let's say you want to get rid of the urine, it's finally going to exit, right? It exits, the urine exits via the urethra. So all of these ur prefixes is important, your urinary, ureters, all of these are all about excretion. And it exits via the urethra. Uh, and guess what? We have finally accomplished number four. That's where number four is. Once it exits via the urethra, you have accomplished excretion. So we can check it off here. I think we have all of them, one, two, three, and four. So that's nicely summarized. And just sort of a, a fun fact, something that's interesting to know, at uh, this point right here, the urinary bladder, up until you exit via the urethra, this is actually where potty training uh, is going to be involved because there's actually a sphincter here, which is just a muscular structure that can be voluntarily uh, learn to control. You can learn to control this exiting. And that's the idea of potty training in short. Just thought that was a fun little snippet to throw out at you. So we've covered all of these steps. We've finished with the excretory system. Of course, I, I hope you gained a greater appreciation for something that we really uh, obviously see like every day within us occurring. Uh, it's a fantastic process to, over, uh, to overview. And again, hopefully you've gained a greater appreciation and an understanding of excretion.